are back at the Global Party 2017, Healing from the Inside Out. And look, Don McDougall is here with us. We had technical difficulties before from Costa Rica, but now it is all resolved. And he's going to be talking about the Costa Rica initiative, the family home. Uh, and, you know, I would, the, the giving economy, that's what I'm going to call it. I've got a new name for it, the giving economy. <laughs> Can you hear me okay, Don? I hear you fine. Okay. So let's just kick this off with you have a wonderful story about where you were before in your life and to where you are now. So we can we can just shorten it to say that you were down and out or you can go into as much detail as you like. But the kicker is, I think, is where you are and what the work you're doing in Costa Rica now in and how it is transforming other people's lives. Well, I can talk about a general what I see generally happens with the majority of people that are really looking for the truth. And I'm just one of those guys. And, uh, you know, I always, even in my hippie days when I was doing psychedelics, I was looking for the truth. I was just looking in the wrong place, <laughs> you know? So uh, I think everybody is born into the world and they don't know what the hell they're doing. And they don't know why they're here. Now, a lot of people fall into line with uh, whatever the standard of the society they're in or the culture they're in or the family they're in. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, most most humans find out that love is not unconditional and that there's room for us here if we fit into the plan of the society or the culture that we're in. Mm -hmm. I find this to be true all over the world because I work with people and almost every kind. <clears throat> and so uh, we suppress and hide a bunch of this stuff, and it's got to come out somewhere. You know, <clears throat> anger was not okay in my family. And, uh, you know, sadness wasn't really okay with my dad. If you're going to cry, I'll give you something to cry about kind of thing. Right. And, and so, and we pass on our dysfunction and our 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 uh, shadows what we call the shadow from generation to generation until we make a break until we do something about it and so i work with a lot of mother daughters and sons and fathers and it's so amazing how similar the problems each generation has with each other yes you know uh and so we just pass that on. So, yeah, my father was a perfectionist, grew up in a real abusive home. Mm -hmm. And his way of dealing with that self-judgment of not being worthy was to, uh, you know, be excellent, excel in everything he did. Right. So when we were born, my whole family, uh, you know, he passed that on to us and as a child, I misunderstood what he was saying, you know, because I was thinking from a child perspective. Right. You know, I didn't understand his pain or his soul, you know, his, where he was coming from. So I took it as a judgment against me. So, Don, you did really good, but it didn't matter what it was I was doing. It was always you did really good, but, you know, and the but just negates everything about the praise, you know. Yeah. And so I grew up with this belief, this inner core belief that no matter how hard I try, I'll never make it. I'll never succeed. And on top of that was this idea that I didn't deserve good things because I was so stupid. Mm. You know, and so I worked many years trying to excel in everything. And nothing I did, I ever won, won my dad's approval. And so if I couldn't be the best at something good, I was going to be the best at something bad. And so I got involved in, uh, in you know, gangs and criminal activities and drug abuse. And I was a drug dealer for the mafia. I, I, I tell people I've lived many lifetimes in one. I don't know about reincarnation. I, I hope I never come back. <laughs> you know, but I've, I've, I've tried all kinds of different things. 
looking really for what this core essence, what we call the, the core essence or the truth within, right. that part of us that's eternal. I was looking for that. And I look, look through religions. I look through all kinds of uh, different modalities, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I finally got to a place where I gave up on it all. I quit reading books. I'd read Eckhart Tolle and all the guys and all the all the healers and the gurus. And I'd read all that stuff. And none of it connected with me, connected inside me. And when I finally gave up, that's when I began to awaken. And when so, you surrendered. Yes. That's what I, you know. Uh, so that's, that's the key to awakening is that I completely surrender all the efforts that I have within my little ego self uh, and you say, okay, if I die, I die. You know? Uh, so I had, had done A Course of Miracles three years in a row. Mm -hmm. You know, the book says uh, when you've got all you can get from it, throw the book away and come under your God with empty hands. I didn't know what that meant, but I said, okay. So I threw the book away. <laughs> And I was in this in this place of uh, just total despair almost. Mm -hmm. And uh, every book I read was just another blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, 15 ways to stand on your head in the closet. Yes. You know, all these self, all the self-help books. I had tons of them. I gave them all away. I threw them out the window because mm -hmm. they, they didn't serve me anymore. And it was in that place of doing that that uh, I moved to Costa Rica. Uh, so I, you know, I did do a, a international uh, ACIM conference here in Costa Rica in 2010. It was called uh, uh, Choose Once Again in 2010. Uh -huh. Kind of like the global parties it reminds me of. Right. And, uh, you know, and it, it was a semi... It, for me, it was a great, the greatest learning experience of how to follow the inner guy. Mm -hmm. Now, there was other benefits that came out of it from other people, but for me, it was this trusting because I'd wake up in terror sometimes because I wouldn't know how, what's next? How am I going to make this happen? And everybody I talked to said, oh, you've got to have lots of money. You've got to have a big bank account. You have to have, you know, $50,000 worth of credit. You have to have all these things. You can't do an international conference with no money. Right. And I, you know, I had 15 cents or 20 cents in my pocket, maybe <laughs> a little more than that, but uh, compared to what they were saying. And I, I ended up, you know, booking uh, 200 rooms, you know, right. and uh, a whole conference center and had meals provided. And I had for the whole three day conference. With no money and no credit card. <laughs> With the power of, of abundance in the spirit. Well, and that's that's what I'm saying. We give and the universe always provides. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to ask you to elaborate then because I know people are going to be going, well, how? How did the universe provide the meals, the rooms, and, you know, the um, if there was no money involved? Had to come well, to I I booked this conference center that had a restaurant and a hotel. Mm -hmm. And so we booked their whole hotel and the conference center. And, the, you know, all the meals were going to be provided through that restaurant. Mm -hmm. I didn't put any money down. I didn't put a deposit down. Uh, I I had all the things they do on those. I, I don't do that anymore, but I had, you know, uh, 90 days out discount, 60 days out discount. Right. So I had people signing up and, you know, sending me a little bit of money. Now, everybody told me what I was charging was way too little. And I said, oh, I, you know, I, I don't even like charging anything. So. Right. So the the end of it all, everything showed up and, and people donated much more than what they I'd asked for. Hmm. And so everything was covered. There were some of the hotels uh, in that area of, of uh, Berlin, uh, Santa Ana, Berlin, yeah. that I didn't I didn't need. So I gave them a week notice, saying, "Hey, we, looks like we're not going to have enough, as many people as I thought. Right. Okay. So go ahead and book your rooms if, to somebody else if if you want to. 
Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was all fine. They held him for me for a month on a booking list. And then if I gave them a week notice, I didn't have to put a deposit down. Now, most places, you know, they want, you know, 50% down deposit the hotels to hold them. So, you know, I would, I'd walk into these hotels. And of course, I, I'm, I'm not the most fashionable guy. You know, long hair and beard. I, they kind of looked at me kind of funny most place. And they thought maybe I was a homeless guy coming in to beg. Right. And I would just walk up to the desk and I'd say, I'd like to speak with the manager. And what would you like to do? I'd like to book 50 rooms. They'd look at me like, look at me, you know, me. And then they'd look at around and say, okay. <laughs> and so the, the manager would take me on this grand tour like I was a millionaire. Right. Show me all these different rooms. And I said, yeah, these will do. I want, you know, I want some in every price range so people have a choice. Right. And so I did that at four different motels. You know, and so I had all these rooms to that were available. I didn't need them all. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, if, if something happens and it doesn't work out the way I'm thinking, uh, and not as many people come, I'll let you know. Right. So they said, okay, fine. So we'll hold them for you for a week before the conference. So I'm just saying I was able to give everything I had. Every, I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I, <laughs> I gave everything I had to make this happen because right. I knew that that was what the universe was guiding me to do. Right. And it all happened. And we all, you know, a lot of people came. A lot of people got a lot out of it. We had... I had booked all these speakers, and some of them wanted, you know, twenty-five thousand dollars down, stuff, stuff like that. I said, no, thank you. Right. <laughs> you know, but I had uh, eight speakers come in on Skype and do their presentation for an hour. Awesome. So it didn't cost anything. Right. You know, and so, and then I had uh, nine people come in that donated their whole time. Thank you. So, you know, people were willing to give back because they saw me willing to give. And that's 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 the, the life, that's the world I live in, a world of give give. Yes. I was talking to a guy in Uganda on uh, on Facebook and he was saying, Oh, I'm so broke and poor and da da da. I started talking to him about divine abundance. And he said, What's what's that? <laughs> I said, Well, the way you start divine abundance is give what you have. He said, well, I don't have nothing. I said, you got a smile. Yeah. You can give somebody a glass of water. Mm -hmm. You got some water in your house. You know, you can help an old lady across the street. Right. You know, you've got a lot to, we got a lot to give. But it's, are we willing to give what we have? Or do we have to hold it in for ourselves? Or do we have to wait for somebody else to offer to us first? And that's the principle that we live in here in Costa Rica in the family house and in the Costa Rica mission. I've, I've held maybe a hundred or so more, I don't know how many, I never counted, workshops. I never had a, a, a fee for them. Right. Uh, I never charged anything. I never said anything about money the whole time. Right. You know, people say, oh, what's it going to cost? I said, I don't have any fees. Right. I said, what? <laughs> what? And I even had some people say, you can't operate like that. I said, watch me. <laughs> but I always had enough to cover all the expenses of the workshop and then some. All the food, all the places, you know, people stay, all the stuff. So it always worked out for me to be able to provide what I have. And people say, well, you could be making lots of money doing this. I and say, why? Say what? I would say, why would I devalue the work I do? Ooh, good answer. Yeah, why would I want to devalue? The, the work I do with people is, is be priceless. It's beyond a cost of financial cost. The work I do with people is, is to change eternal forever. Yeah, and I just realized that's I was I was thinking the other day, how did I actually come in contact with you? How did you come into the conversation with Brian Chamberlain and I? And I remember 
it was because I was saying that I felt that the world was moving towards giving, right? That money was being removed, that if people just gave what they could. And he goes, oh, well, that's what Don does. And that's my, I'm, I'm taking a course from him in Costa Rica. And he's like, I should hook the two of you up. And yeah, here we go. Well, I work with, you know, we, I don't know if you saw our promotion video, but uh, we've, you know, there's been over 120 people since we started doing the journey worldwide, doing the journey. And they're in some sort of the state, some stage or they're finished. Right. And everyone that has finished the journey has lives a whole brand new life. None of those judgments, none of those fears, none of those things that used to bind them uh, are there anymore. Right. You know, and so we use, you know, the journey came after what I realized when people were doing these workshops, but they were just getting a little piece of the pie. And so uh, I came up, you know, I was given this idea. I say I came up with it. It came to me uh, because I had talked to a friend that had done one of those Buddhist uh, 10 day silent meditations, uh, workshops and retreats. And I said, you know, we could do, we could do something like that. Only focus totally on the inner self. Yes. The, the work we do. And so that's where the, 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 the meditations came up for, from the, for the work, for the journey. I did one <laughs> and Nobody showed up. It was too scary, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but so I started doing it with people online. Uh, <clears throat> I do a process called the shadow release, which is a form of psychodrama. Sorry, you, know, you do. A, I I lost you there. You do a process called the shadow. What release? Release. Okay, shadow release. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> it's uh it's a form of psychodrama. And so we relive a situation, only we come out of that situation with a whole different perspective. So it's really, it creates new neural pathways in the brain. And so it's like defragging your brain. Right. It's removing all the, the negative self judgments and all the repressed emotions. And, and uh, putting in their place a higher perspective of yourself, a higher perception of the world. Mm -hmm. And eventually, at the end of it, there's nothing left, and so then only the truth is left. Yes. And so we can live from this place of truth within us. And uh, that's freedom. Yes. I'm no longer I'm no longer bound by. Uh, the laws of the world, so to speak, in the world, but not of it. Yes, exactly. In the world, but not of it. That's that's what I believe. That's how I kind of raise my kids that they're visiting. I say, you know, they got dropped off by the spaceship. And when they were little, <laughs> we'd use those examples and they're walking around. And yeah, um, right. Yeah. You know? Well, everybody I work with has a defining moment in their life, a turning point. Mm hmm. Uh, an abuse, uh, uh, a sickness, an illness, uh, something that stops them from being able to focus on the consensus reality, and that's the term I use, the, uh, the reality that we're taught is this is how you're supposed to be. Right. You know, women are supposed to uh, get married and have kids and raise a family and support their husband and all that stuff, or become a businesswoman and uh, be successful and don't need a man or whatever. But, it, it, you know, we have these society and the world has these different ways that they say, this is how life is. This is how you can be successful. This is what you need to be happy. And, you know, I've, I've had many businesses. I've failed in, in one and many of them, you know, I've, uh, you know, I've been very successful in some businesses. I've, I've lived on the streets <laughs> under bridges, uh, you know, so uh, uh, I know I know the world, uh, how it's set up. I know how that world out there is, and I no longer have to live there. I see that, you know, if I see a bum digging in the trash can looking for something to eat, mm -hmm. I say, oh, there I am. Yeah. That's me. And yeah. so I can, I, hey, buddy, come here. Let me get you a sandwich. 
and take him down to the, the sandwich shop and get him a sandwich. He doesn't have to dig in the trash this day, you know? Well, I, I just feel I, you know, do you, do you know the term freakening or dumpster diving? Oh, yes. I was a dumpster diver for years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, yeah I, I know. I'm, I was an expert in dumpster diver. <laughs> well, I, I was just, the when it was sort of hit home to me about how, like, I was being trained in the sense of abundance is everywhere is um, we were doing some dumpster diving and we were finding it was organic food that was coming out of the thing, right? Oh, yeah. Like so much organic yeah. food. And one of the ones was my, my youngest had said, Oh my, her birthday was coming up. And she said, you know, one of the things I want is I want my own supply of hot chocolate. Okay. And the yeah. next, time she went to you know we went dumpster it was like there was 20 packages of organic hot chocolate exactly. like and it was just exactly. like wow you know the universe puts it in the dumpster you know sort of thing and it's all i mean people have yeah. no idea the gold mines that are in there and but they're so trained to just going in the grocery store so yeah i i, I got you i'm with you yeah well yeah so my i sobered up in 1988 and I was had been out of the work field for a while, mm -hmm. and so what I did was uh, I dumpster dive between uh, AA meetings, <laughs> right. and I started finding all kinds of neat stuff. So I started having garage sales, <laughs> <laughs> and then I found a skill saw and a level and a nail bag and a hammer. Uh, in a dumpster, and I figured somebody had stolen it from a job site. So I went around and asked everybody, "Hey, uh, is anybody missing these?" And nobody claimed them. So I said, "Okay." And now, I, and that's how I got back into doing construction. Beauty. And so I, <clears throat> I had a flea market booth that uh, was about 2,000 square foot, mm -hmm. and I had all kinds of departments. So you know, from nothing to to this. Uh, and I did that for a couple of years till I got to where my head was, you know, on straight enough to, to actually do some actual work on a, on a regular schedule. So I'm just saying, yeah, the universe will always provide for us, but we, we have to realize it may not be in the form that we expect. Exactly. You know, and so I tell people I prefer pork chops, but when I became willing to just have beans and rice, then my attachment to bit pork chops was removed. Right. It didn't make any difference. And so now I can have what needs to be done without having to say, oh, it's your turn to do the dishes or right. your turn to, you know, wash the clothes or do, clean the bathroom. We just, whatever needs to be done, we just, somebody does it. And, we never think about it. And if I'm doing something else and somebody, you know, it's okay. I'm not, oh, you didn't, you know, no, it's none of that. And so everything gets done. Mm -hmm. All the bills get paid. Mm -hmm. uh, all, you know, we got food to eat and uh, we live comfortably. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's just a really harmonious way to live. And this is, our vision is this healing center. And, uh, and community that we've been we've been holding that vision for a number of years uh, and so yeah we see that coming we see we found a, uh, another house that we want to buy right. buy <laughs> we we started a uh, a nonprofit which will actually own the house okay and uh, so we're open for donations for that uh, <clears throat> And we just trust that the universe is going to make everything happen. So we just we just do what we do each day, and we don't think about it. You know, I, I I don't live in the future, and I don't live in the past, and I live with what's going on right now. It's a great way to live because that's all there is. That's all there is. <laughs> that's why I tell people. Most people didn't understand Eckhart Tolle and the power of now. They thought it was like in the present moment. And I said there is no present moment. In time, and time just keeps going. Yeah. You know, you can't ever catch the present moment. Ah, where is it? Ah, come back, come back. <laughs> but now is outside of time. Mm -hmm. 
And when we got when we get into talking to this, well, I lose a lot of people because they they don't understand what I'm saying. But it's okay. When we do the journey, these these are the things that we begin to um, embrace as the natural state of a human being. Yes. This is this is being human, living beyond the the uh, the control of all this. Uh, emotional bullshit that's outside of us. Right. You know, and uh, being free to be in the, in the now, right now, all the time. And so there's no fear. I even do, I do a thing called uh, the purpose of fear. It, you know, and it says most people think fear is a negative emotion. It's not. It's if an opportunity. Know, if we know how to use it. Fear heightens your awareness. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, it brings you back to the present moment, to right now, to, to right now, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I tell people when you're in fear, stop and look around. You're not homeless. You're not naked. You, you didn't, your job didn't end today. You know, mm -hmm. you didn't wreck the car today. Your kid didn't end up in jail today. Whatever their fear was. Right now, it's not happening, right? Right. So right now, everything's perfect. Absolutely. And so it can bring me to a place of surrender. And it's that little self, the ego self, that fears. The ego lives in the past or the future. I think the ego just wants to hang around. So well, yeah, it wants to keep us distracted from the now. Mm -hmm. Because that's where the power is. That's where God is. So that's where the divine is, or whatever you call that. Right. You know, and when I when I'm in the now, then I'm in the, the whole power of God. Yes. The yeah. whole power. And the whole power is complete abundance. Like it, it the whole universe, that whole sense of abundance is in you and I. And we're in it because that's all that is. They just don't know it. Most people don't know it. That they are God. In disguise as a human being. And that probably trips up a lot of people that have had any type of Christian roots that are told that there was the one son. So, so yeah. I, I got what you're saying, but yes, I can see where where people patterns and what they've been told since they were young just sits there with them and they're afraid to let go of it in order to embrace the truth. Right, right. And, and people say, well, I came out of a Christian background and I was a Holy Ghost preacher for a while. Mm -hmm. How in the hell did you get to where you are coming from that background? Well, it wasn't easy. <laughs> It took a lot, The and I tell people, when I was running as fast as I could away from God, it, how much more did he have to work to get my attention than when I'm, I'm surrendered? And, and the truth, God, whatever you call that, would rather just be able to tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, Don, look at this. That's mm -hmm. all. Oh, okay. But I'll we don't do that as humans on, in the earth, on the world. Well, I, I I view that as what's happening now. I, I so. yeah. see the, the manifestation of the internet and the connections is like the awakening that each person has the ability to be expressive and unique on their own, right? right. Mm -hmm. And we're just, it's continually expanding, right? You think of how the internet started and how many, you know, it's it's endless of what is actually out there. And that's the... The representation for me to say, look, you, you know, we're a, we're like a piece of dust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why would we think we know anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in our in our smallness, mm -hmm. we know nothing. Yeah. But it's when I own that that I can know everything. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so people say, oh, so you know rocket science? I said, well, if I needed to know rocket science the information would show up. Yes. 
rocket science doesn't fit into what I'm doing right now. Right. I don't need that information. Right. And, and you think of all the great inventions, right? Mm -hmm. they, uh -huh. they didn't, they weren't studied. They usually say, oh, you know, it arrived yeah. finally. Uh -huh. Aha, aha, I got it. You know, this is how it's going to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of the inventors that would, uh, in that alpha state, mm -hmm. just before awakening or just before going to sleep, that's when they would get their greatest ideas. It would just, and I used to do that. Even didn't even realize I was doing it when I was in the construction business. I'd be in a, I'd be, you know, engineers and architects have a great way of drawing pretty pictures. Right. But they don't always fit into the area that you're going to actually do the work. Mm -hmm. And so I'd have to come up with some kind of solution for this. And it, usually, just in that those moments before I woke up, the idea would come. Try this. And I would go and I'd say, okay, to my crew, I'd say, okay, everybody, here's what we're going to do. And we do it and it would work, you know. And so over and over. And that's how most of the inventions and even, you know, the Internet and, and Facebook and all these things came by that inspiration. You know, and uh, it's, it's we're all inspired. We are. And I... I you know, this presence that you're sharing, because really it's, a, it's, it's a, a gift that you're giving by being present to what's coming through you. Mm -hmm. It's just the awakened state of saying, allowing everybody to, to vibrate with it at the same time so they can start to shed the layers of their shadow mm -hmm. and open up to the truth of being everything and nothing at the same time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, uh, we, uh, you know, we actually have invited people from around the world to join us in the community mm -hmm. and to come and finish doing the journey. Or so, a lot of them have finished already. A lot of them are uh, working with people in different parts of the world doing the journey mm -hmm. on their own. So it's not something like uh, it's got to be an exclusive thing with me or with us. Right. But anybody that's done the journey is capable of doing the journey with somebody else. And someone could just go online to the Costa Rica Initiative dot com, mm -hmm. and there be they could just sign up there. And how like is there a is there a first step besides signing up that somebody needs to you know like make a decision that they want to change in their life, mentally prepare, or is it just yeah I'm gonna. <clears throat> Well, just like you showed up in my life, everybody shows up by divine design. Yeah. By the time, you know, uh, I just had a guy from Kansas City. Uh, I start the journey and, you know, he's had a lot of spiritual experiences and been to Buddhist temples and done all ayahuasca and done all kinds of different stuff. And he says, that, you know, these are and I said, well, those things were helpful. Those got you to me. Right. You know, so everything, you know, uh, everything that happens in your life, you're, uh, you start this journey, but when you first decide there's got to be something greater than what I've been told. And that's what I call uh, waking up in the dream. Yeah. It's kind of like lucid dreaming. It's, it's like, uh, and, and I work with, uh, I work with a New York lawyer that s sold everything and moved to Costa Rica. <laughs> Because she realized how meaningless her life was. Right. You know, and so she's here doing something else. And so, uh, so that's what I'm saying. So everybody, everybody's had these moments. I think every human being has had a moment where they said, huh, there's got to be something more than what I'm doing. You know, and those that 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 voice or that thought stay with, mm -hmm. they might resist it for a while. They may say, oh, no, no, I'm a successful whatever, right. or I enjoy what I'm doing, or I'm a good drug addict, or whatever. I'm a good bank robber, whatever it is. I like what I'm doing. Right. But that voice will keep pounding you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like this little bastard inside of you that will, keeps knocking 
And you say, no, go away, I'm busy. <laughs> Pretty soon you have to you have to say, okay, what is it you're going to try to tell? And that's when the journey begins. That's what I call the first step. So everybody that's been on this global party has taken that first step. Uh, and so it's 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 like we've uh, we we search we're searching. Mm -hmm. At some point in the search, we realize there's nothing to search for. It was always here. Yes. On our Facebook page, we have a, a thing about little fishes in the water, and it's it's like a, why would a fish be looking for the water? <laughs> you know, but you know the the. Uh, the, the ego mind, the shadow mind, the little self, whatever you call all that, always wants to stay away from the truth. But the truth will win. I'm just telling you. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. I, For me, it's just lovely hearing you speak about it because I feel like the same for my journey. It was this, it was the surrender is when complete freedom came. So I was spiritual for a very long period and then really for when my daughters and I surrendered to say we had to leave Richmond Hill and we just went with every fork in the road, our guidance. Mm -hmm. And we were led to Prince Edward Island and everything like my 86 year old father is a perfectionist and an agnostic. And he had to say, Oh my gosh, it's like everything has worked out perfectly for each of you, including our dog. Right. Oh, like wow. it, it's like, <laughs> heaven you know that idea of heaven on earth mm -hmm. it's and you know you do the old pinch me sometimes to say wow the detail that the universe can provide mm -hmm. is quite extraordinary yeah well and that's why you know i say uh <clears throat> you know a lot of these business uh coaches they say okay make a five-year plan and a 10-year plan i would have i would have missed it so bad <laughs> <laughs> well you know, you know, if I had been making the plan, I didn't know what the hell I was doing most of the time. I still don't. Yeah. And I really don't know where this is all going to go. And it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So I know that uh, whatever the next step is, the next stage, the next phase of the journey, will show up. Yeah. And uh, whatever it is, I'll be there to do it. I won't be busy uh, doing something else. <laughs> No, and, and, and we'll have to talk more about because I have in the a, a passion for, I think one of the reasons led here about healing, the same idea that this whole idea of healing from the inside out, that there needs to be places where people can gather and connect, just like you have probably the family home, where they feel like they, they are supported to mm -hmm. allow themselves to let go and be who they really are. Well, there's a video on our website. Uh, about the family house and it's an, a group of people that were here talking about their experience mm -hmm. and we're going to do another video uh, with people that have been here sharing their experience with the family house uh, and uh, this one gal uh, from North Carolina she was saying yeah she was here six weeks I think it's the volume effect the volume effect yeah, just everything was so calm and peaceful and, mm -hmm. and just flowing and it was so easy. <laughs> yeah, so it was really good. And uh, she had uh, uh, heart palpitations uh, due to her uh, being allergic to electromagnetic mm -hmm. field. Mm -hmm. And so she lives in, she's been living in a cabin in North Carolina in the mountains with no electricity. Mm -hmm. No internet, no nothing, and uh, no cell phone. <laughs> right. Because all those, you know, and uh, she, she, when she first came, she was here a couple of days, and she said, "Well, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stay, you know, because of the the Wi-Fi and the electricity and the right. whatever, and the computers and the cell phones and all that stuff." And she had this magical uh, experience at night, one night where. She felt the hand of God on her heart, on her chest, and her heart. And just the whole uh, 
allergy uh, allergy to the electromagnetic stuff went away. Yeah. It just left. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I've seen lots of feelings like that and participated. Yeah. And so yeah. I and I think that's the type of stuff that, that gets me excited and why I want more of these stories to be shared. Because mm -hmm. the more everybody shares about the ahas, because this is what happened to me, it might seem very simple, but it inspires someone else to believe that, yeah, I can leave this old world behind me, the one that's the big illusion that I feel like I'm, like, I like uh, Nasuko's word of jail, mm -hmm. and be released okay. into full possibility. Yeah, yeah. Not. Well, I, I think it's, it's, it's coming. Uh, I, I meet more and more people around the world searching for truth or, you know, or, and I, you know, and I realize at first it's like we're searching for this truth. And so we're looking around. I say, it's not out there. <laughs> You'll never find it out there. <laughs> you know, it's inside you. Know, let's go inside and look inside and let's clear the trash out of the way, all the bullshit out of the way so that you can find the truth within you. Yes. And then you have that truth, the inner guide. And I know you use that word too. This inner guide that uh, will never fail. And uh, so it, it's it's a process that we we do, and uh, you know, uh, so it's it's kind of like we're we can just be in this free fall of being, and we're not having we're not doers anymore. We're receivers and beers, right? We're yeah, just yeah. Well, most most humans are human doings, and they their value is by what they do. Like ah, that was they, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, when I realize that what I do doesn't really matter, it's who I am, because what comes out of that is perfect. That's divine love. That's, that's, that's divine healing. That's divine source of, of presence. Mm -hmm. When I live that in the world, then everybody that I contact, even go down the street, people recognize there's something, something different about that guy. More than he just doesn't ever cut his hair or shave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's something different about that guy. And that's because the God self, the, the truth is, is right there. It's right in front of everybody. Well, let's just finish off on that, that the God self is right in front of everybody. It is in everybody. Mm -hmm. And this was just fabulous that you shared. So just make sure that if you have any more questions, I know I'll be going to check it out later. I just need to... Uh, I could carry on talking to you for hours, I'm sure, but in this particular case, I have to somewhat be on. I understand. I really do. I was watching the time I myself. Stay on time because it hasn't been that way. So I'm in the flow, and the flow says what needs to happen now is for me to say, Mwah, I love you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very, very much for sharing. And I look forward to us talking again very soon. Yeah. Well, my website's on there. Just give us a, give us a chatter. Come see us, and uh, we love everybody. Okay. Thank right, you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. How do you turn this thing off? <laughs> mm -hmm.